Alright lads, it's time for our first official weapon tier list of Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 3. And we're going to get right on into it because there's so much to talk about. I'll be providing some video examples to my rankings to justify why. Comment down below what your go-to loadout is this season. And of course, like, subscribe, and use code SOURHEART in the Fortnite item shop. Now as you can see, we actually have all of these items right here. It includes weapons, healing, vehicles, mods, and there's even a couple of mythic things on the map as well. But that all pales in comparison to the true meta of this season in the real ultimate power of Fortnite Wrecked, and that is the vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the cars. I'm going to put them all over this tier list. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you in the next one. Of course I'm kidding, but these things are so damn dominant. They really do determine how you're going to be playing this season. So a lot of how I rank these items is going to be based on how good they are in the context of fighting a vehicle or being at a disadvantage because you straight up cannot be running through the fields this season you cannot be taking open fights you need movement now more than ever so i'm gonna go ahead and take these cars and i'm gonna throw them in the garbage because that's where they belong baby and let's talk about actual fortnite you know you remember fortnite the shooting game Let's talk about the best weapons in Fortnite. So we got the DMR. The Reaper Sniper has been removed from the game. Thank God, one hit KO snipers had been in the game for nearly eight months. So now the DMR can reign supreme. It's a lot more hit scan than the Reaper was towards the end of its life. This is definitely a peak weapon right now. If you're getting this, you can two tap people essentially. You will make closing that distance very, very easy. And this is one of the most viable weapons for fighting vehicles at long range. I'm a big fan of the DMR right now. Next, we have the ever popular Deagle. And this thing got a big buff. The round flies even faster than before, and it has a bit of a headshot bonus. There is a mythic version of this as well that you can get by capturing the floating island, and it can do 185 headshot damage. This is definitely a peak for the Deagle. Long range accuracy is well rewarded this season. Next, we have the Boom Crossbow. And in my eyes, this thing is kind of mid. You would think it would be good against the vehicles, and it does a fair amount of damage, but it runs off of your explosive rounds, and you can only have 13 in your hands at any one time. That's of course, unless you go to the Nitrodrome and get the medallion that gives you infinite ammo, and it will give this weapon a bit of a damage boost as well but you gotta land on that boss, and at that point, you'll have the boss vehicle, and then it's a question of why. When are you ever gonna get out of the vehicle to fire this weapon instead? Next, we have Enforcer AR, which has returned to the game, and this thing can rip. It hits above 40 damage to the body. It's the hardest hitting AR of them all, and in my eyes, it's pretty peak. The way that ARs usually work is that the one that hits the hardest and the one that hits the fastest usually contend for the top spot, but they're normally equally viable. And this is one of those seasons where the Warforged AR does not hit for as much, but it has such a good fire rate that it pretty much makes up the difference. Kind of the loser here, even though it got a buff, is the Tactical AR. And as much as I liked the original version of this, I am gonna have to stick it in the trash because it runs off of your light ammo, but it doesn't hit for enough to really justify that. The fire rate isn't that much higher than the Warforged AR, and it does have quite a bit of fall off damage. Even though they buffed it this season, there's just no reason you should be taking this over the other spray weapons, including the Thunder Burst SMG. And this is peak. This is a really, really good gun that is only improved over time. When you kit it correctly, it might be the best AR in the game, quite honestly. However, it is pretty skillful. Like, you're gonna have to be a good aimer to succeed with this weapon. It is not as forgiving as the spray weapons. Like, you gotta be hitting your bursts. Then we have the Harbinger SMG, which I'm gonna put in mid. I know that it's the best weapon for builds if you're trying to take walls, but it's far from the best SMG we've ever had in the game. And considering there's a burst SMG and there's always the burst wall replace technique you could use, there's no real reason to be using an automatic SMG in my opinion. Now something I was a big fan of towards the start of this chapter but has fallen out of favor is the Ranger Pistol. You gotta kit this thing right to really get the maximum efficiency out of it, and even then it's not really gonna contend with the other spray weapons in the loot pool. Returning to Fortnite and now moddable for the first time ever is the Combat Shotgun, and I think this thing is peak right right now. It has a fire rate that matches the gatekeeper's shotgun, but it does so with five more rounds in the chamber. It doesn't have a good headshot, but the gatekeeper 
in large part is going to fail you if you're not the most accurate player. And you got to go through that process of putting the drum mag on it. Part of the reason I rank these weapons why I do is that I like to use weapons that are good right off drop and you not have to worry about it. Any weapon that you have to mod to make good is going to get you killed more often. The gatekeeper shotgun can contend though. You do got to be a better player. It's got a better headshot. It does need to get modded. I want to put it at the top of mid. And I think I'm gonna just because I don't want as much stuff in peak. That's not the point of having a peak ranking, right? Nothing you have to mod to make truly useful can be in the peak. So I, I think I'm actually gonna have to drop the Thunderburst down below the ARs just for that reason. I don't want to put it mid though. Next, we got the Hammer Pump and this thing is trash. It's got to be the worst pump shotgun we've ever had in Fortnite. It barely hits. It doesn't have enough rounds in the chamber to justify how slow it is to fire. There's really nothing redeemable about this shotgun, and I'm surprised it's been in the game this long and hasn't gotten any sort of buff. It really is odd. Next, we have the newly introduced Nitro Fists, and these are part of the Fallout collab with this season, and these things are peak. In my opinion, they're too powerful. They're the most powerful melee weapon we've had in the game. They smack you around like grapple blade. They have knockback effect. They can send you in a straight line with movement like the kinetic blade. They just have too much power. And these are something that I do expect to get nerfed a little bit, but I do like that they start out overpowered and then draw it back rather than making them useless. Next, we have the Porta Bunker. And in the current meta, I really hesitate to put this at peak. I got to put it at the bottom of mid because even though it does help you base up, the prevalence of cars makes it so that your bases don't really last that long. Not only are they firing explosives at you, but there's the spiked bumper that'll just straight up go through your builds. This Nitro Fist will go through your builds as well. I would much rather be picking up movement than bunkers, quite honestly. Now, this seems like an odd thing to be on the list, but there are fireflies available on the map that you can put in jars. I cannot imagine the situation you'd be using that though, so automatic trash. Now we got the shield bubble, and these things, I feel like they're kind of small, too small to be useless when you're fighting on your feet, but they can be thrown on your your vehicle. I don't know if everyone knows that. I feel like it's a pretty popular Easter egg. So for that reason, I'm going to have to put them only under the gatekeeper because if you're engaging in vehicle combat and you're in a duo or squad mode, these things could really make the difference between winning or losing that fight. In that vein, I'm going to skip ahead and get the repair torch and put it right next to the shield bubble. This thing is really, really good if you have a duo that you're communicating with or a squad you're communicating with. With the shield bubble and a repair torch, you pretty much have an unkillable vehicle. And as long as you are coordinating properly, you're going to win many lobbies just because in duos and squads, people are random queuing and there's no way they're going to match your level of planning. We also got the Nitro, and I'm going to have to put this up at the peak. This is just something you can throw on yourself or throw on your vehicle. It'll give it unlimited boost. It'll give you pretty much unlimited run if you do the sliding technique. You can run through walls, so it's really valuable in build mode. Actually kind of broken in build mode. This item is going to be absolutely necessary on a competitive level because there are no cars in tournaments, but there is still Nitro Fist and Nitro Juice. Shockwave grenades have kind of fallen down i'm gonna put them at the level of the bunker because honestly i'm looking at shockwave grenades and i am not taking them i'm really hunting for this nitro fist because it has a rechargeable movement system to it sadly fencing fields has been removed from the map thanks to the sandstorm but the flowberry fizz is still in the game and this is the peak healing not only does it heal your squad not only does it heal you over time it actually gives you enhanced movement for healing with it. So this is a must carry in pretty much any situation. The only time I hesitate to pick it up is when I'm in solos because there is like a two to three second activation time that the other shield items do not have. Mini shields, as much as I love them, I'm going to have to be harsh on them. They're kind of trash right now. You can only hold six. They only heal you up to 50 shield. You can use them on the move, but you can do that with regular shield potions as well, and they can take you all the way up to 100 shield. So essentially, a stack of big shields is better than small shields in every conceivable way right now. Nuka Cola is very interesting, and I actually put this just under the shield potion. It does heal you for 25 health instantly, 
and then 75 shield over time. But again, that does happen over time. It's not quite as powerful as the Slurp Juice from Chapter 4, and that shit was super broken, let's be honest. And now that I'm considering these healing items relative, I'm putting the Big Shield next to the Flow Berry. Health Kits also go in the peak. You can use these things while moving. They heal you for like 6 or 8 per second, which means you can use them to make endgame storm plays. And much of the competitive meta is now centered around heal-offs in the storm, so these things... 100% win games. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the bandages though, and these things are trash. You can hold 15 of them, but they only heal you for 15 every three seconds. And they do not do it over time. They do it all at once. So you can't even use these things to survive late storms. They just take up the loot pool as well because they're common rarity. They're everywhere and you never want to pick them up. And it's honestly very annoying. Dead center in the mid zone is the shield fish. And this thing is a bit nerfed from its original incarnation. It only gives you 40 per fish, which is odd because you can only hold three. So it's effectively a lesser stack of the shield potion that you have to go through more work to get. It's not uncommon for me to start fishing in a game because I desperately need health or shield, and then I'll get the badge that tells me I'm the first person fishing in the game, and it's close to top 25, maybe even top 10. Nobody is fishing in Fortnite right now. The only exception would be competitive lobbies, and that's where the flopper becomes a peak item. If you can't get your hands on med kits, this is the next best thing. You do have to stand still to use it, but it is 40 health in one instant, and that's enough to protect you from storm damage, make some interesting storm plays, and making plays from the back of storm has become a fundamental part of Fortnite competitive, so I have to put these in the peak. Minnows, to me, belong in the trash right next to the bandages, and just like bandages, they only get you up to 75 health, and it's the same thing for the meat from the animals. These items are mostly there for flavor. You're never really gonna be using these for anything. Maybe you'll use them in the moment when you fish them up, up. I guess the saving grace of those two things that puts them above the bandages is that you're never going to find them in the ground loot when you're looking for a weapon. Now there's a variety of food that comes out of the food boxes that you'll find around the map. And even though they all come from the same place, they are not of equal quality. The two that I would actually consider carrying in my inventory are the cabbage and the corn. Because both of these heal you for 10 health each unit. And that is just enough to actually make them useful in an end game. All the rest of this stuff only does five per. And because of that, I got to put it at the very bottom of trash. Now we're going to go ahead and rank the cars and the mods. And I'm just going to do them really quickly and then explain why I put them in this order. So we have bike at the bottom, battle bus above that, G-Wagon, then Whiplash at the very top. And for me, even though the Whiplash has the least amount of health, it is the fastest, it's the most ergonomic, it's only a two-seater. So you can block people from taking your passenger seat with an NPC. I found the G-Wagon kind of cumbersome, and overall it's a bigger target. It's much easier for people to shoot you. And the Battle Bus is something you're really only going to want in squads. It has the added benefit of an EMP effect, but... The chances of you using that solo are very small. And the dirt bike, as far as I know, isn't even moddable. This thing is just getting from point A to point B, and you're much easier to shoot while you're on it. Oftentimes, I don't even take this thing, even if I do need some movement. Now, when it comes to the mods, we have to rank these a bit differently because some are just clearly better than others, and they're the ones you should definitely be preferring. There's also a couple of mods that will be coming out in the future. Right now, we have leaks of armored windows and spiked tires. But for now, what you're actually going to want to be putting on your vehicle is the indestructible tires, because obviously no other car will be able to destroy your tires. And then you want the spiked front of your car, the spiked bumper, because this is going to allow you to plow through buildings. You're going to do much more damage to players. This is one of the aspects that actually makes the car gimmick really broken this season. When it comes to the weapon on your vehicle, it's honestly your choice. I do prefer the machine gun in zero build because I feel it's more direct. People don't have as much cover. When you're in build mode, the grenade launcher is going to be much better because people will base up and that's going to get them killed. And then the other two mods I'll put at the very bottom, that being the cow catcher and off-road tires. These are legacy items and they weren't updated at all to make them competitive. And when it comes to boss mythics and medallions, we have three medallions on the map but we have five mythic boss items and we also have the mythic deagle which can be obtained from the floating island but i'm afraid this list will glitch out if i add it right now so we're gonna go ahead and put it at the very top and then rank the rest of the bosses because you do have to go through a boss to get the rest of these mythic items 100 percent at the top has to be megalodon because you get two mythic items for the price of one. You get his mythic combat shotgun and you get his mythic nitro fist. 
which has one extra charge above the regular Nitro Fist. His coin also gives you infinite Nitro just as a matter of fact, so you'll never have to stop sprinting. It's honestly insanely busted, and if you're playing in build mode, this is the guy you should be hardlocking every match if you can. Next, we have the Machinist, and she has a mythic Warforged AR, which really lets you tear people up but her coin is the real power of this. She lets you heal your shield over time for up to 75 shield. This pretty much means you'll never have to carry healing items. You can just bounce POI to POI, and you'll probably just get the healing off the people that you kill using this coin. And the last of the new bosses is Ringmaster Scar, and I gotta put Ringmaster Scar down at the bottom. Their coin is pretty much an updated Ares coin, so you will get a bit more damage on your weapons, but you'll also get unlimited ammo as well. But the only weapon you're really gonna care about this with is the crossbow that comes from this boss. And this is really the only way I think to make the cross crossbow effective, you need this infinite ammo coin, and you need the mythic version of it as well. Otherwise, you're best off not even picking up that crossbow. And of course, all three of these bosses have their own vehicles. Megalodon has the SUV of the three, the other two have modified whiplashes, and this is the case where I would take the G-Wagon over the whiplash, because his is just so tough. The infinite nitro really makes a difference and there are actually situations where you'll just plow through people's vehicles by virtue of how tough yours is compared to their crappy little whiplashes next we're gonna put oscar and he is back at his drop spot and he does have his mythic frenzy auto though it has been a bit nerfed and it's gonna be harder to use it because the mythic combat shotgun is around i really do fear that if you go for this mythic you're gonna lose some games just because you get outranged and at the very bottom, we have Cerberus and his Mythic Gatekeeper. And the thing about it is you cannot modify Mythic weapons. And his Gatekeeper shotgun comes with a speed mag by default. So you're never going to get those five rounds in the chamber. You might end up whiffing and losing important battles. That little bit of power boost isn't enough to justify going for this guy. Plus, he doesn't drop a coin anymore, so you don't get infinite Cerberus dash. He's definitely the least viable option of all of these. And I'm actually just noticing that I did put a separate tier for healing. So let's go ahead and put all the healing down there in order of importance. And this way you can see them relative to each other to see what you should be taking over what. And I'm actually gonna make a couple modifications here. These small shields should be right under the shield fish. Shield, more important than healing, quite honestly. We're also gonna have to bump the coconut up because it can heal you for shield and health. And that's how I'd rank every weapon and item in Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 3. Do you agree with the way that I've ranked stuff? And what is your go-to loadout? We do have leaks of many things coming in the future of this season, probably 10 plus items. So I'll be updating this tier list towards the end of my future Fortnite videos. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And of course, use code SOURHEART if you want to support this channel.